define cyberspace? Cyberspace is a um, metaphorical idea, uh, which is supposed to be the space where your consciousness is located when you're using uh, computer technology on the internet, for example. And uh, I'm not entirely sure it's uh, such a useful term, but I think that's what most people mean by it. Do you, do you, how does that strike you? I mean, that your consciousness is located somewhere other than in your body. Well, the, the, the most interesting thing about the term for me is that it made me begin to think about where one's consciousness is when uh, interacting with other kinds of media. For example, even when you're reading, where, where are you? What is the space in which your uh, consciousness is located? And when you're watching television, uh, where, uh, where are you? Uh, who are you? Because uh, people say with um, the Internet, for example, it's a little different in that you're always interacting or most of the time with another person and when you're in cyberspace i suppose you can be anyone you want and uh, i think uh, as uh, you, this uh, program indicates it's worth it's worth talking about because uh, this is um, uh, a new idea and uh, something very different from face to face co-presence with another human being. Do you think this is a good thing or a bad thing or you haven't decided? Well, no, I, I've, uh, mostly <laughs> I've mostly decided that uh, uh, new technology, uh, this kind or any other kind, is uh, a kind of Faustian bargain. It always gives us something important, but it also takes away something that's important. That's been true of uh, the alphabet and the printing press and telegraphy right up through the computer. For instance, uh, when I hear people talk about um, the uh, information superhighway, it will become possible to shop at home and bank at home and um, uh, get your texts at home and get entertainment at home and so on. I often wonder if this doesn't signify the end of any uh, meaningful community life. Uh, I mean, w when two human beings get together and they're co-present, there is built into it a certain responsibility we have for each other. And when people are co-present in family relationships and other relationships, uh, that responsibility is there. You can't just turn off a person. Uh, on the internet you can uh, and I wonder if this doesn't diminish uh, that uh, built-in human sense of responsibility we have for each other then also uh, one wonders about social skills that after all talking to someone on the internet is a different proposition from being uh, in the same room with someone that not in terms of responsibility but just in terms of uh, revealing who you are and, and, and discovering who the other person is. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm one of the few people, uh, not only that you're likely to interview, but maybe even ever meet, who uh, is opposed to the use of um, personal computers in school. Because school, it seems to me, has always largely been about how to learn as part of a group. School has never really been about individualized learning, but about how to be socialized as a, as a, uh, as a citizen and as a human being, uh, so that we, uh, we have important rules uh, in school, always emphasizing the fact that one is part of a group. And uh, I worry about the personal computer because it seems once again to emphasize individualized learning and individualized activity. What, what images come to your mind when you, when you think about what our lives will be like in cyberspace? Well, the, uh, the worst images uh, are 
are of people who are overloaded with information which they don't know what to do with have no sense of what is relevant and what is irrelevant people who become information junkies what do you mean How well do you mean the the uh the the problem in the 19th century with information was that we lived in a culture of information scarcity and so humanity addressed that problem beginning with photography and telegraphy in the 19th in the, the uh, 1840s we tried to solve the problem of overcoming the limitations of space time and form and for about a hundred years uh, we worked on this problem and we solved it in a spectacular way and now by solving that problem we created a new problem that people have never experienced before information glut information meaninglessness uh, information incoherence I mean if there are children starving in Somalia or any other place it's not because of insufficient information and if crime is rampant in the streets in New York and Detroit in Chicago or wherever it's not because of insufficient information and if people are getting divorced and mistreating their uh, children and if sexism and racism are blights on our social life none of that has anything to do with inadequate information now along comes cyberspace and the information superhighway and everyone seems to have the idea that ah here we can do it if only we could have more access to more information faster and in more diverse forms at long last we'll be able to solve these problems and I don't think it has anything to do with it do you believe that, that this that the fact that people are more connected globally will lead to a greater degree of homogenization well, uh, of the yeah. global so society well, here's or? the puzzle about that Charlie when when everyone was when McLuhan talked about uh, the world becoming a global village and uh, and when people ask uh, as you did about how connections can be made uh, everyone seemed to think that uh, the world would become in in some good sense more homogenous but uh, we seem to be experiencing the opposite I mean all over the world we see a kind of reversion to tribalism people are going back to their tribal roots in order to find a sense of identity I mean we see it in Russia and Yugoslavia in uh, in Canada in the United States I mean in our own country uh, why is it that uh, every group now not only is more aware of its own grievances but seems to want its own education you know we want a an afrocentric curriculum and a Korean centric curriculum and a a Greek centered curriculum what is it about all this globalization of uh, communication that is making people return to more uh, to smaller units of identity it's a puzzlement well what do you think that people society should be doing to try and anticipate these negatives and be able to do something about them I think they should everyone should um, uh, uh, be uh, sensitive to certain questions uh, for example uh, when a new confronted with a new technology whether it's a cellular phone or uh, uh, high-definition television or uh, cyberspace or internet uh, the question or one question should be what is the problem to which this technology is a solution and the second question would be whose problem is it actually and the third question would be if there is a legitimate problem here that is solved by the technology what other problems will be created by my using this technology about six months ago I bought a, a, a new uh, Honda Accord and the salesman told me that it had cruise control and I asked him what is the problem to which cruise control 
is the solution. By the way, there's an extra charge for cruise control. And uh, he said no one had ever asked him that before, but then he said, well, it's the problem of keeping your foot on the gas. And I said, well, I've been driving for 35 years. I'd never found that to be a problem. I mean, am I using this technology or is it using me? Because in a technological culture, it is very easy to be swept up in the enthusiasm uh, for technology. And of course, all the technophiles that are around all the people who adore technology and are promoting it uh, everywhere you turn. Well, Neil Postman, thank you for all of your cautions. Thank you.